What's good, YouTube? Carfight King here, Aqua Life Baby. Uh, so yeah, um, this is my promised Aqua Force Legion deck pro. I was gonna make it the other night and then upload it, but um, it just I was just too tired, frustrated, and the deck profile just just sounded horrible. So I just coming at you guys with more energy today. Um, so yeah, I've been testing with the deck since the set released. Uh, I've been trying to get in as much good practice as I can. I've been fiddling around with the break ride builds and things like that. And ultimately, I've came to this build that this build is a little bit more accurate in getting in, you know, synergizing with your rear guards and everything like that. So, um, this build's been actually working out pretty nicely. I'm going to test out in a tournament. Obviously, things in this deck are subject to change because I still need to get better practice against Thing Saver Abyss and glare since that's pretty much you know the strong points of the meta right now especially from what happened at the cash tournament so um yeah so this is the build i have so far i'm gonna start off with grade threes and work my way down and see how that goes so let's get started now we're gonna go from worst to first the worst is zaharis um he's the vanguard you don't want to ride at all at, i mean really at all what his skill is is when he's in legion and you drive check drive check a copy of him or his mate you get to choose two Aqua Force units on the field, restand them, and give them both plus 5k. Um, that sound, you know, his effect when you hit it is good, but he's a very inaccurate card. Uh, I've actually, in all my testing, I've actually never hit this skill off. His best trait is just legioning and then unlocking the rest of, you know, the rest of the rear guards in your deck so that, you know, the deck's rear guards can synergize and function. Um, and his other skill is you have to counterblast one to give him 2k when he for for when he swings i mean that's that's stupid why i mean you have other vanguards that just gain 2k and you know so we did get shafted in legion i'm not too happy about this but um yeah you don't want to ride him at all you want to use him just as an attacker and then we have four types of tetra burst he's our main vanguard he's the better of the two uh when you're in legion when you swing on the fourth battle more that turn he gets 5k and extra crit um, now he doesn't bring us what Maelstrom Reverse brought us was, I'll punish you if you guard me, you know, the pull plus two thing, but he still brings the extra 5k and the extra crit, um, and his other effect is he gets 3k when he swings, so when you're in Legion, he's gonna swing, he'll swing for 23k, meaning that he's gonna swing for magic, for magic numbers on a cross right unboosted, 28 when you use his skill, and with a minimum of 4, he'll be swinging for 32, so that's magic numbers on an 11k Vanguard, and pretty decent, a pretty decent number on a cross ride. So, He's he's still a really good card. He hits for numbers. That's the best thing about it. It's just that we missed the whole Maelstrom Reverse effect. You know. And, you know, the actual Maelstrom effect of if you hit, I get to go plus two, things like that. But the extra crit is really nice for some late game pressure. All right, let's get into grade two. All right, guys. And for grade two, we have three copies of Blue Storm uh, Marine General Gregorius. Um, again, this is subject to change. I, I, uh, when I mean change, I want to actually add another copy of him because he is really clutch. Um, you know, the 12k, you know, it's just for rushing. You know, Aqua Force needs to put their units on the field, start getting our poke attacks, start sniping rear guards, and, you know, reducing your opponent's hand, forcing some hard guarding decisions. You know, that's what we do. And, you know, having a 12k attacker like him really does that, especially late in the game when you're just, you're just, you know, pounding on an 11k Vanguard. So he's a really good card to have in this deck, and, you know, I only run through with him because I'm running four copies of Iannis. If I don't, if I if I could run less, I would. But the only reason why I'm running four of him is because I want to, I want to have the chance that Zaharis' skill goes off, um, you know, with the highest chances possible. And you know, I have you have to find ways to set him up on your field so that he can be um, so he can be used. Because on the third battle of the turn or more, when he, if he hits a, an opponent's vanguard, you get to draw a card for free. So that's pretty good. Um, he's a better he's like a better version of uh, of Algos. But again, he, he you know he he doesn't really do too much. But you he if you can set him up right, he can produce some nice pressure options uh, against your opponent. And then we have four of the best grade two in the deck, Starless. Um, he's just he's just he's just a fantastic card overall. What he does is when you're in Legion. Um, you know, he's a 12k Basil, so he'll swing, gain 3k, hit for 12, and then swap with the unit behind him. Uh, this is the card, this is one of the cards that we've been waiting for, just a 12, a 12k Basil. So, 11k 12, Vanguards and MLB, 
um, they're they're no longer safe from you know the switch columns you know out you know outside of uh, Diamantes. They're no longer safe. So he really presents us with you know that rush we need that that card that we need to keep our rush alive. Um, now he only works in Legion, which is why I'm I'm running again. I'm running uh, max copies of Zaharis because I want to just Legion and get and get him onto the field, get his effect off uh, as fast as possible. Because there's it sucks when you just leave him on the field to be sniped out and things like that. You know, in in here. All right, let's go into grade one. Oh, and I also wanted to explain. I don't know the reason why I don't play Title Assault in this deck is because. Um, unless you're playing against, like, brawlers and things like that, like, your meta's heavy with brawlers and whatnot, um, if you just get one copy of him on the field or one copy of the Grade 1 card I'm going to get to in a minute, uh, they're just going to sit on the field and pressure your opponent, and then Tidal Assault's usefulness, you know, pretty much goes down. It, 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 you just don't need it, and, um, you know, the 12k attacker is better served in his place uh, than anything else, because, like, once you get him or Tempest Border on the field, they're just going to stick there. So that's the reason why I don't run Tidal Assault in this deck. Uh, obviously, that is going that is subject to change, you know, as as the meta evolves. But yeah, all right, let's go to grade one. All right, guys, and for grade one, we're gonna start. We start off with uh, two penguin coon. I call him, you know, I call him penguin coon. He's usually my little tech card in every deck. Um, this number is subject to change as well because this deck, the deck doesn't really build soul outside of me having to ride over Zaharis as soon as I get Tetra Burst. Um, but, you know, he's good for the little early game thing of, you know, Soul Blast 2, draw. And he's good, you know, like you can set him up in a certain way, then, you know, retire him off. Oh, excuse me, for something better. But, you know, he, he, does, he does his work. Um, again, he's subject to change because I might want to take one. Because, you know, once you use one copy of him, it's not really live for the rest of the game. So, I might change out a copy of him for something else in the deck. Um, and then we play four perfect... Three perfect guards and one quintet wall. Uh, we're trying to stay as competitive as possible. That's why you run four sentinel units. Um, the reason why I switched up to the quintet wall for this build, at least, again, I still need to do testing, and he's subject to change right back into a perfect guard. But it's because um, sometimes I found that this deck has trouble legioning and are legioning, yeah, legioning a bit early. So rather than just sitting there dropping 10k shields and 5k shields all game. Um, just having, you know, him there to drop the five or late game, you know, drop the five when you can't afford to drop perfect guard is pretty nice. So, uh, I've been testing one out. One's been doing fine. I've, you know, haven't run into any issues at all. So, yeah. Um, next four we have is four copies of Blue Storm General Hermes. He is one of the best cards in the deck. Um, it's, it's odd to say that about a 10k attacker, but... He allows for early rush, mid game rush, late game plays with a booster, you know, late game plays with sniping rear guards out. Uh, he's a 7k booster, so it's really nice. So he just has a he just adds a lot of versatility to the deck, and um, I just I, I just can't see myself running less of him because he is that he's just that important to the deck. And then uh, last grade one is four copies of Tempest Border. I call him Scouter Vegeta. Now, what he does is um, he's a free wheel assault. When you're in Legion, uh, after he boosts an attack, you can choose two uh, two Aqua Force units on the field and swap their positions. Again, he's another fourth battle enabler. When you have him on the field, unless you're going up against Brawlers or pretty soon Perdition Dragons and whatnot, um, he's not coming off the field. He's just going to sit there, and he, allow he allows for you to make a formation where you can actually get five attacks off while hitting a real, while still hitting really good numbers, and I'm gonna get into that at the end of the video. But he's a really good card, definitely needed, um, and a nice seven K booster. And Dimension Free Will Assault. All right, on to Grade Zero. All right, guys, and for Grade Zero, we have two crit triggers. Now I, now I know this is going against my thing, and my thing of you know fourth battle. We don't play crit triggers. The only reason why I'm playing a crit trigger now, um, and again, it is subject to change right back into stand triggers, is because sometimes, um, you know, when you're on Zaharis, you want to just swing with one column and then swing with Zaharis. And then if you get a crit, throw it on another column or, you know, just give crit to Vanguard power here, things like that, you know, for that little, uh, quote unquote, surprise thing. 
it, it, it ha I have him running a problem because we can Legion and I can send stand triggers back into the deck since it still is my main trigger. Um, you know, it does alleviate the problem of the crit trigger a bit. But, um, you know, when we get some new cards that are all fourth battle, I will be switching back to eight stands. Especially, again, because Link, Link Jokers are not a thing in my meta. Um, I rarely play against them. And uh, I mostly play against Paladins, Golds, Royals, and Shadows. So, you know, the stand triggers are, wor you know, the stand triggers is, you know, my main choice of trigger. But the two crit triggers, you know, have been fine. A little surprise here and there. Um... Four copies of Malika, the best, our best draw trigger. Yeah, I, I believe in running, if not four, three copies of her, because just being able to throw her in a soul to make certain things hit for higher numbers is just really good. Marvel clones are awesome. Uh, and then I play six stand triggers. Again, this is my main trigger for the deck because we have, um, you know, Tetra Burst is the fourth battle, and if he doesn't hit anything else, generally fizzles. So. The stand trigger um, gives us that extra attack that you know we, that we need. And early game, it can be pretty devastating. Four heal triggers because we're trying to stay as competitive as possible. And last but not least, the starter uh, Eric. The reason why I run Eric is for accuracy. It's for um, it's for ride accuracy. It's because I don't want to ride Zaharis, and if I have Zaharis in my hand, and I'm on grade two then I'm using Eric's skill and I'm going to look for my Tetra Burst. I do not want to rise the horrors. I do not want to have to do that. And in order for me, and he's just another way for me to prevent uh, to run the horrors. Now, I do like the other starter, Anos, and I would run Anos. I'd probably run Anos if Zaharis wasn't that bad. If Zaharis was better, I would run him. Uh, but since he's that bad... Eric, I believe, is the better choice because you just don't want to ride Zaharis. All right, but that's been my Tetra Burst deck profile. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys need me to explain anything uh, more, just, you know, PM me, hit me up, whatever, comment down below. Um, again, I'm going to test this out some more. I'm going to change up the build how I see fit. Uh, I'm going to get some. I'm gonna get a tournament in with it, and I'm going to come back at you guys with um, the results. This has been the Carify King, and I'm out. Peace.